So I know a lot of folks in the country are going through, you know, kind of, sort of the same thing I'm going through and people in my neck of the woods here in North Carolina are going through and that's the lack of rain this summer and it's been a crazy hot summer for the most part. I mean, you know, my fescue looks pretty good. Uh, most of it looks like that right there. Thick and dense, healthy, but then you'll have a few little spots like this right here. You know, come out here, it looks good. Uh, the places where I get super, super good irrigation coverage, it looks really good. And then the places where I tend to lack a little bit of irrigation coverage, or I don't know that it's necessarily lacking irrigation coverage because I have pretty good coverage. Uh, I think I chose the wrong words right there. It's more of just not running the water long enough. I know you remember, what, three years ago, two years ago, I got a bad case of pythium going right down the center of the yard right here. There's a zone of irrigation here. There's a zone up there, a zone over here. They both throw to the inside and I have a zone down the middle. Well, I've capped off that zone to the middle because that line underground has busted somewhere. That's how I figured out about the pythium is it just stays super mushy wet right in here so you know the only thing it can be is the line is cracked in the ground somewhere i'm not gonna go through the trouble of digging it up and repairing it and all that so i've just been using these two zones to cover the front yard and of course they overlap some in the middle but you know i'm just not getting enough water right through there i've still got those three little areas of common bermuda you know i've done a lot <laughs> since i've been living here i mean a lot of different things to try and get rid of that and it just won't go away so i'm gonna leave it for this year anyway here's the second spot there are little tiny spots right there now what i will do is before i aerate and overseed i'll come out here and i'll pull that up yeah it's not gonna make it go away but i'll just pull it up to say i pulled it up a little bit of nut sedge in here not much you can see that right there i just mowed so it's just now sticking up these little lime green spots are all nut sedge mm, i'm really not worried or concerned about that i might spray a little uh sedge hammer on it if i get time but chances are i'll just let it go and let the cold weather uh take it out look at this right here look look at this there's that third one <laughs> that joke right now. I am going to get rid of this. I am going to pull that up and take and throw it in the dumpster. That's devil grass right there. That's what that is. It's Bermuda. Of course, I've told you a hundred times over, you can make common Bermuda look good. I make it look good in my business all the time. But in my yard, in my fescue yard, it's the devil grass. I don't want it in here but it is it is what it is i've tried a claim pilex fusillade over the top uh shoot roundup straight roundup coming out of a foamer highly highly concentrated i've literally tried just about every mix at every different rate you can possibly imagine and also keep this stretch of fescue pretty thick. So that goes to show you that a good thick stand of fescue will not choke it out. So I said I wasn't gonna pull it, but I done pulled it. So let me go ahead and get this right here and be done with it. And of course it'll be right back next week. It ain't going nowhere, that's for sure. All right, so let's throw this in the trash can. And let's go to the backyard. Finally had a minute to spray my bed. You can see all that nut sedge starting to turn yellow. I haven't done a soil test in uh, at least four years out here. And as I was walking around, paying attention, you know, as I get in a good a green area of grass, the probe just whoop, goes straight in, no problem. And then you get over to an area like this, and that ground's hard as a rock. Every single area where it's kind of brown right through here, this whole stretch right here is hard as a brick. It's just, it's just hard. I just think there's a hard vein in here. 
see the shape of it right there see it's green a little bit on the other side and a little bit on this side and it's like a long uh, rectangle and that rectangle goes all the way up through there you can almost see a clean line follow my finger look at there clean line all the way through and then you come right here on the other side clean line and so I just think that's a hard pan section and it continues down through my bluegrass because that's in line with the areas in back there I'm having a little trouble with too from where it's uh, hot and dry so this section right here uh, this zone there's a head right there and then there's a head right over there well that zone I have to turn it on and run it manually I don't know what's wrong with it the valve or something's gone bad or something it just don't work with the timer anymore and I have not had time to mess with it I reckon some things I just need to call the irrigation guy and let him come out here and fix it this section right here gets zero water and of course it gets you know hammered from the sun it's wide open right here a little bit of shade in the afternoon and I took a sample from that spot right there hard as a brick come right over here same thing this is kind of in line with that zone but this whole section right here rock hard ground right there and this is an abnormal section okay see how this crepe myrtle sitting right there well as the sun goes around the crepe shades right up under here see how that's still nice and green i've got this open area right here and so the shade never hits this little section right here now, i think that's part of what's going on right there is this little opening right here it just continues to get beat down by the sun and you know is what it is then along the outer edge of the yard it kind of goes right around through here you can kind of see it's a little bit brownish color right through here that's a little bit stressed out and i think that's from the maple tree roots because you will see the stress begin right in front of the maple trees and then you get over here it goes away then you get right back over there in front of that other maple tree you see it again and when i plug run the aerator out here i can feel the tree roots in the ground right there so i think that's uh contributing to that in a way yeah a little bit of brown here and there kind of down in the canopy just tough summer to grow grass to grow cool season turf it just is what it is so the question is how am i going to fix it well i'm going to go a little bit overboard uh you could just aerate this thing two or three times core plugger go over it two or three passes really bust it up good go down with your grass seed water away uh, start a fertilizer if you may but i'm going to go a step further and i'm gonna do something i've never done before and that is i'm gonna bring my ventrac broom out here you know i've got the rotary broom for the ventrac i've always wanted to try this i've done it on bermuda and used it before rye overseeding it's kind of like a way to not necessarily dethatch but kind of semi dethatch you know the broom bristles are kind of flimsy but they spin at such a high speed they'll actually do some cleaning but they won't pull out the good grass they leave the good grass behind so of course i don't want to pull up my good green turf but this brown stuff down in here i think that's going to work well to pull that out i'll do that uh, cut the grass down a little shorter right now it's cut at uh three inches i believe uh, three and a quarter three inches i'll probably take it down to like two inches and then go over it with the broom and then uh do my core aeration uh, definitely using my stinger on it i can plug this thing four times super super fast with that stinger it's just so incredibly quick and efficient i'll do that and then put down my gci turf drop tall fescue and then it'll just be a watering ceremony we'll just we'll just be watering like crazy then and hopefully we get a little rain and then everything will come back to life and get back at it of course i'll probably run a I don't know, I gotta get waiting on my soil test to come back. It depends on where my phosphorus levels are at, whether I run a starter fertilizer or not. If I'm low in phosphorus, I might add a little bit of phosphorus in there. But if my phosphorus levels are adequate, I'll just I'll probably just go with straight nitrogen on this. Alrighty, then come on back here and obviously 
you can see the stressed out areas right here and then that i still think that summer patch uh i threw the book at it back here with fungicides and nothing absolutely nothing no combination would clear that summer patch up so it's i'm gonna count that turf as dead of course i'm gonna do the same thing back here with that broom that way i can clean all this up I'm trying to get all this yucky out and kind of get back down to dirt. Look at this right here. Look at that, just running my finger up through that just a little bit. See how it's opened that canopy up? That way I can get that good seed to soil contact. I'm gonna tell you what, I probably, I may even dethatch this with a verticutter because that's starting to get a little bit of thatch build up in there. I don't know, I got them. See if there's a way to measure that thatch and then see if that's gonna be too much or not enough or whatever. But either way, I'll probably verticut it. I'm gonna probably verticut this, yeah. And go pretty deep and clean it out real good. Not necessarily a, a renovation back here, but kind of do a partial semi kind of sort of renovation. Just really open up the canopy good. That way when I do overseed, I'll get that good seed to soil contact so that I can get good germination. Uh, look at that spot right there. I'm telling you, I think this broom, the Ventrac broom is gonna do wonders on this stuff right here because it'll leave all my good grass. It shouldn't, it shouldn't pull up that green grass right there, but everything that's brown, you know, mixed in, it should just, you know, knock it on out and then expose the dirt and I'll be good to go. Let's see here, come right over here and look at this old big spot right here. This is that hard spot, that vein I was talking about. You can see it kind of goes right down through here. And man, it has done a number on that bluegrass right there. Look at there, that's rough. Now let's go right here. Let me show you a little something right here. You know, I'm still not going to go uh, back on what I've said in the past. Yes, you can have Kentucky bluegrass where I live. I firmly believe that, and here's why I say that. There's an irrigation head right there. There's an irrigation head right there. And there's one right there. All three of these overlap. Uh, not intentionally, it's just kind of the, the layout. They just do. And they run, I think, 25 minutes per zone. Maybe, maybe 30, I'd have to check. So about an hour and a half of water hits this spot right here. And look at that. Look at that turf right there. It's kind of got a white film look to it because I sprayed some uh, clearies on it not too long ago, two or three days ago. But look at that right there. It's just as lush and as thick as it can be. That's because it gets the proper amount of water where that Achander obviously does not. So it's all about the water with bluegrass, especially in an area where I live when it, where it's you know this hot and this dry look at that mm. so here's the rye and the rye grass has kind of sort of been hanging it around pretty good it, it does pretty good right through here because it's closer to that irrigation head the further away you know the droplets get kind of bigger and i don't have a head in there other than the one i installed the other night you can see the uh, line all it's brand new so i'm just preparing for seeding now this corner can get some water and <laughs> look that that's why that corner's burnt up there's a head right there and it throws all the way down to right there and then you see the brown start but that's because no water whatsoever hits that area that head right there is going to cover this area now but all this rye looks really yucky now the dark brown that's from lack of water, it's dead. But everything you see in here that's kind of somewhat green, uh, four days ago it was really green until I sprayed Roundup on it. Now it's starting to change colors. I've got a different uh, mix of ryegrass I'm gonna plant right here and try and give me some comparison to what's been there. And these flags in the shape of a square right here, and you can see that bluegrass is really off color. That's because I sprayed this for Roundup too. This uh, inside the square has been sprayed. So that's why it's really looking bad, really starting to change colors. And I've just got something I'm gonna do right here and I'll show you that in a later video. 
on my irrigation system back here, I think I'm finally going to get to use it because I got my Wi-Fi updated at the house. Uh, it's lightning fast now. It makes uploading YouTube videos much more easier, but it's still the connection won't reach out here to my building. So I'm gonna run a hard wire. Uh, my Wi-Fi system, internet systems on that end of the house, on the other end of the house, on this right corner. Now I'm gonna run a line underground, go under the grass and come behind these cryptomeria and go all the way down. And then I'm gonna cut right across the grass right there and dig a little trench. And then just stay up under the pine needles and go in the building and hardwire a, I think it's a modem maybe. I don't know anything about that stuff. <laughs> I just know that you turn the computer on and it works. That's all I know, really. I think it's a modem, I, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. It's like a little block that you hook the ethernet or internet cable or something like that to, but I'm gonna hardwire it and come out here, plug it in. That way I can run my ear green out here finally and hopefully get some good use out of that. I do have a little bit of compost left uh, from when I, top dress this back in the spring of the year. I think I've got like three totes left, or maybe four. Uh, it's a sack full of compost. And I think I got like four of them. <laughs> so what I'm getting at is I'm probably gonna top dress back here and the fescue after I overseed and kind of lay that on top of the grass seed and kind of sandwich the grass seed between the dirt and the compost you know just give me a little bit more seed to soil contact and uh i think that improves your germination might hold a little bit extra moisture in might not i don't know i do know this i have kind of moved away from the peat moss thing uh, just i've seen several cases to where the peat moss you know worked in a negative way so I kind of moved away from that and you know strictly compost or some type of topsoil or something like that i know the compost is clean uh, very unlikely that i'll bring any weeds in from that because i know the manufacturer personally and i know their process and procedure and all that kind of thing so i think it's pretty clean i think it's pretty safe to use but that's an update that's where we're at and that's what i'm going to be doing to prep for uh, overseeding and that kind of thing so i got a little bit to do but again i also make this clear you can not get this out right there if you just run the plugger of it with it enough and it's cool the temperatures comes and you get germination and all that this will go away that'll be gone the brown will kind of just melt away down in there or whatever but i'm just going to kind of go a little overkill on it because I want to try out that broom on a thick stand of fescue and just see how well it cleans it out. Just the curiosity is about to kill me, so I gotta try it and see what happens. So there you go. Uh, get ready for your seeding in the fall and uh, be encouraged. You know, you're, you're not the only person. I mean, every yard in my neighborhood is toast right now. This is hand. This yard isn't green and isn't looking great right now, but it is the greenest in the neighborhood and the greenest quite a ways around me. I'm just saying that to let you know that, you know, this heat wave has affected every single yard. All the yards around here are struggling like crazy. Even uh, Bermuda yards, if they're not irrigated, uh, they're struggling off color pretty bad. All the irrigated stuff around here, they still got bad spots in them. Uh, we got some yards we managed that look really, really, really good right now because they just have crazy good irrigation coverage and they are pumping water to it. They don't care what it costs. They are just pumping the water to it. And they look fantastic right now. But that's just not the case for most people. So uh, if you're going to rent a aerator or if you're going to contact a local lawn care company to you to do your aeration for you, you need to go and do that now. Go and get on their schedule. I'm telling you, for lawn care companies, it's probably going to be a crazy, crazy busy fall because so many yards are jacked up. And with fescue, you know, 
if it's not dormant, dormant, yeah, it'll come back out and be fine in the fall. But if it's dead, it ain't coming back out. And it ain't going to be good for fall. And the only way you can refix your fescue yard is sod or seed. That's it. So get your seed right, get your sod right, get your schedule right. Go and get everything lined up and in order. And of course, the bluegrass, you know, it tillers and fills in and spreads and all that kind of thing but some of those areas back there they're just too big so i'm gonna have to overseed and if i'm gonna overseed some of that i'm just gonna go and overseed the whole thing and just it's just easier for me to do it that way to do the whole yard than just picking little tiny spots here and there so hope that helps you and uh, of course i'll video the seed work out here in my yard and on the bluegrass and show you those two spots back there that i killed out or, or they're in the process of killing out and i'll show you what's going on there so appreciate you taking time today to watch i'll check you later